Henry was born a nobleman, the Earl of Richmond. But his upbringing in exile had left him with no experience of governing. It had made him a sharp observer and a man who gave nothing away. For England to believe that Henry was the rightful king, he would need to behave like one. And that is exactly what he did. Parliament has met at Westminster for over 800 years. The official records of its debates, meetings and acts stretch back to the Middle Ages. In early November 1485, Henry VII's first Parliament met. He would use it to tackle the inconvenient truth of Richard III's reign and to rework recent events to suit himself. And here's the written proof, the parliamentary record which shows how he did just that. In this record, Richard III is the usurper, Henry VII is the rightful king, putting the record straight. Richard III was referred to as the late Duke of Gloucester, and afterwards, indeed, and not of right, King of England. And his legislation is referred to as the act of false and malicious imaginations. But there was one thing in particular during this parliament that Henry did, which sent a ripple of unease through the commons. He rewrote history. It simply consists of a date here. Now, the Battle of Bosworth was fought on the 22nd of August, 1485. But here, Henry VII has dated his reign. The 21st, in Roman numerals, day of August last past. That's to say, the day before the battle was fought. We might ask, what's in a day? Well, by backdating his reign to the day before, he beat Richard III and became king. Henry was effectively accusing everybody who had turned out for Richard III on the battlefield of treason. The Commons was shocked, but in practice there was very little they could do about it. Henry had won his battle, and he was king. And here it is, enshrined in parliamentary record. With Parliament sewn up, Henry's next move would bolster his position further. A marriage to cement all his dynastic ambitions. It was a strategic partnership, the fulfilment of a pact made while he was in exile, the pact on which his invasion was founded. The previous 30 years had seen England torn apart in what would come to be known as the Wars of the Roses, the House of Lancaster, represented by the Red Rose, against the House of York, represented by the White Rose. Richard III's coming to the throne in 1483 divided the House of York. He imprisoned his young nephews, two princes, in the tower and proclaimed himself king. The princes were never seen again. Their supporters fled to Brittany where they found the young Lancastrian Henry, a refugee in exile. They agreed to support Henry's challenge to the throne, but only if he would marry Elizabeth of York, daughter of the late King Edward IV. It would be a union that promised to reconcile a divided England. But Henry needed something to reinforce this union, something that would link this new dynasty with the English crown in the minds of his subjects. So he brought in the decorators. At Westminster, the seat of government, he plastered his family emblems across the walls, ceilings and windows. They included a symbol so powerful in its simplicity 
that we still recognise it to this day. This, of course, is a Victorian building, but we can get a sense of how these badges and emblems were deployed and used by Henry. We can still see his mother's badge, the Beaufort Portcullis, and alongside it, the most significant emblem of all, Henry's red rose. Henry's revival of a rather obscure Lancastrian emblem, the red rose, was a masterstroke. What it allowed him to do was to place his own rather sketchy credentials on a par with those of his wife, Elizabeth of York, the white rose, and together these two roses would combine to create the most potent and enduring emblem in English royal history, the rose both red and white, the Tudor rose. Henry was stamping his mark on the nation. But of course, the Tudor Rose could only be truly embodied by an heir. Vital if Henry was to build a dynasty. And Henry would not have to wait long. Named after King Arthur, the mythical King of Britain, Prince Arthur was born early on the rain-lashed morning of the 20th of September, 1486, at Winchester, the legendary seat of Camelot.